Hey, welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here because today I'm gonna to start a process of something I've been wanting to try for quite a while. I've always wanted to try and tap a maple tree and boil down some maple syrup. So I'm gonna finally see if I can do that. First thing I did was I ordered some of these taps online. Uh, I've got like 10 of these hoses and 10 of these plastic taps. You just drill a 5 16 hole in the tree and tap in the tap and then see if you start to get any kind of dripping sap. Now, I'm not looking to make a bunch of this stuff. I'll be happy if I can get a gallon or two of sap and then boil it down to just a little container. I just want to try it, see if I can do it. If it works out well, then maybe I'll do some more later. But it's just something fun I want to try. And I learned from a friend that you don't have to just tap maple trees. Uh, you can tap, I don't know, walnut, different types of trees and get sap from that and, and make your own other types of syrup. But I'm going to focus on maple as long as I can find them out here and identify them and see what we can do, so stick around. Now I'm pretty good at identifying maple trees by the leaf, but I don't know the bark that well. I'm getting better at identifying oaks, especially back here, but uh, maples are something that I'm not quite too sure about. Maybe it'll stand out as I get closer. I know they have kind of a I think it's like a flaky bark, but let's see what we can find. Yeah, there's lots of oak, lots of beech, some ash back here, and I'm sure there are maple, but as I look around, it's fewer than I thought. Initially, when we got here, I thought there weren't that many oak trees back here, but now it's looking like they're almost all oak trees and a lot of these beech trees, which I think I thought were maple initially, but these are beech. Hey, Hotch. These are beech trees. And I've learned to identify them because they don't drop their leaves like the other trees do. They, they die, but for whatever reason, they stick onto the limbs until spring. So it's kind of easy to identify the beech trees in the wintertime. And there are those lovebirds, Phil and Lucinda again. They put their initials everywhere in concrete, scribed on trees. How cute is that? I can't find a maple tree. I can't find one anywhere. I started marking out some standing dead trees back here. And as I walked around, I found quite a few of those, so that'll be good for firewood. I wonder if you can tap an ornamental, I don't know if this is a Japanese maple or a red maple, but it's right here in the backyard. It's worth a shot. That already started to leak. Hard to see on here, but there's a drop right there, a little droplet. I'm gonna put a second one here since this is a double tree. I'm supposed to angle it up a little bit. So this has only been about five minutes. This hose is curled upward until I bend it down to put it in a bucket, but let's see if anything comes out of the hose. A couple drips. Actually, it's full to here, so it's just, oh yeah, it's dripping out a lot. This one is black walnut. We'll try that too. 
Okay, back over here at the maple tree, we're getting several drops here, maybe a drop every three seconds or so. I've got here a clean five gallon food grade bucket. I'm gonna drill a couple holes in the top and just drop these two hoses in there. But as soon as I turn the hoses down into the bucket, I can hear the sap running in and I can hear it dripping now too. And I got a red bucket for the black walnut. Let's just take this hose and bend it down first. That's a lot. Very nice. All right, well, we'll leave these overnight and see what they look like in the morning. The little bit of research I've done about harvesting syrup or sap is that you want to do it in the winter time and the process has to do with kind of, I don't know about freezing and thawing, but you want the nights to get very cold and the days to warm up and that somehow makes the tree pump out the sap. So this is perfect weather for it. I wish I found some more maple trees, but uh, at least we'll see what happens with that one. So let's uh, come back tomorrow see what the buckets look like. Well, it's been two, maybe three days since I put the taps in the trees. The weather has warmed up, the snow has melted down, and I need to collect whatever sap I have. What I've read about collecting sap is that it's like milk. You need to keep it refrigerated, keep it cool. So today is like in the 50s, so I need to collect whatever's here and at least put it in the refrigerator if I don't start boiling it down. I did collect a gallon of sap from the maple tree, and now I'm gonna see what's in the walnut tree. See if we have anything here. We do. About three quarts. I've been tilting the buckets on an angle just so that any rainwater washes off the top. Even though this hose fits in there, it's a little bit loose. I drilled the hole a little too big so rainwater could actually get in the hole, which I suppose wouldn't matter because it's gonna boil off anyway. But anyway, I thought this was smart just to put it on an angle and you know, if it gets a gallon or two in there, it'll be good. Well, that there is walnut sap. So we've got about really just a little more than half a gallon there so we'll need some more before i can boil this down but i've got the maple sap on the stove right now had about a gallon of that and i'm boiling that down and although i don't i don't have the right equipment yet i just have it in a round pot it's on the electric stove and i don't have i can't find a candy thermometer so i'm just kind of boiling it down and going by sight for this first try we'll see how that goes so this gallon has been boiling now for about two hours. I have it on medium-high heat. I figure as long as it's boiling, it must be 212 degrees, which is what you want to boil it at. And then at the end, you're supposed to bring it up to, I think, 220. We're pretty much down to the bottom of that pot, and I'm thinking that a gallon of sap might give me about a tablespoon of syrup if I'm lucky. So this is just, a, just an experiment. Before I go too far into this, I thought, let me just see if I can get even a spoonful and see if this works. Okay, well, I'm not sure. I stopped boiling it because it was getting real foamy and it was starting to turn a little bit brown. So uh, I got this little bowl here. 
<laughs> it looks like I won't even halfway fill this little bowl, but let's see what happens. <laughs> There's a gallon of sap. So I was kind of joking earlier when I thought I might get a tablespoon out of a whole gallon, but it looks like that's about what I got, and half of that is foam. So I think I boiled it too long. It's probably hard to boil a small amount like that, and I think I may have just candied it because uh, on the spoon it's very thick and bubbly. But it doesn't taste good either. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's worth continuing this experiment or not, but I guess I'll try the, uh, the walnut. Too, but I'll probably wait to get more of that. That does not taste good at all. Okay, well, thanks for watching today. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet <laughs> subscribed to the channel, I invite you to join us. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.